Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment. And today I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about convenience paints. So here I've mixed my own. Um, I am seeing them become very popular. If you're not sure what a convenience paint or a convenience watercolor is, it's some combination that you mix frequently that you get so tired of mixing every time you go to paint that you just decide to buy the tube instead where they're already mixed together. That would be a convenience paint. So <laughs> right now I am seeing the super granulating uh, become very, very popular. Super granulation watercolors. Um, let's see, Daniel Smith makes a really popular one called Moon Glow. Da Vinci makes a really popular one called Artemis. And basically these are really super granulating colors with, I would say, not opposing pigments, but reactive pigments. So they're at different levels of granulation and they definitely react with each other and separate back out. So when you go to paint with them, the colors pull back out and it looks like you have more than one color within the tube. It looks like you have multiple colors. This is a very cool effect. Um, it looks very neat. You can make your own. <laughs> And I'm gonna tell you why we should be making our own everything. We should be making our own everything because when these companies are doing it, they're making the paints, they're not making ones that are light fast. So, I'm sorry, Daniel Smith Moon Glow is not light fast and it has to do with the red inside. The PR, oh gosh, I think it's 177, which just stands for pigment red. And while that pigment is light fast with I believe acrylics and oils. It's not light fast with thinned out watercolors. So that's sort of where the problem is arising is from that. And I know people really, really love this moon glow color because it's bluish and it's purplish and it's all kinds of things that are amazing. But I mean, if you're doing a print product, if you're just gonna photograph it and or scan it, then that's probably enough. It's probably good enough. But if you are doing commissions or selling original art, um, gotta make your own. And I will link to some videos where people show like the Viridian, the French Ultramarine, the Magenta combinations of how to make your own Moon Glow. And I've kind of made a version here. Um, I had to get some Cotman. I don't really own a lot of watercolors like I just don't have the super collection but there's an, um, a creator on this platform that tests everything for light fastness and her name is Kimberly Crick and she's amazing and I will link to a bunch of her stuff and her videos and her webpage because it's just a phenomenal source of information for color mixing but we really need to get back to that um, I will also link to some videos. There's a company called CAM, C-A-A-M, and they make a Supervision watercolor that's like multiple colors within a tube. Again, these are just pigments that are reactive to each other and kind of break down. Um, when you buy that in a tube like that, you have to constantly mix, constantly mix. And I don't mean just like squeeze your tube. I mean, get in there with a fine needle and mix like a mad person to get those colors to, cause they're constantly gonna settle within the tube. So when you go to make your own, I would say buy the pigments separately and then buy a little pan and mix them really well within the pan and let it settle in the pan and then you have a pan's worth within your collection. I'm trying to do a perspective with some of this. And there's other ways to get your pigments to granulate and pull apart. If you really, really like that look of your pigments kind of separating back out and you think it looks really, really neat, and you can enhance that by using cold press, watercolor paper, or sometimes it's referred to as not, not hot press, or really rough 
watercolor paper, and then you can add salt. So table salt, rock salt, all kinds of salt can be added. I need my water. Can be added to your painting as it's drying and as the salt and the watercolor dries, it will lift pigment as well and help with the changing of the colors. And that's a really neat way to do that too. Um, so there are ways to sort of pull things apart in your pictures for different effects. You can see that my paper's really trying to repel this paint because it's trying to separate back out these three colors. And again, this is just a very mild version of Moon Glow. Um, there's different ways, different ways to make these pigments, but it's it's really, really cool and I think it's amazing. I, right now I see that Schmincke has like a, a deep sea super granulation set and a galaxy super granulation set, and a glacier super granulation. The super granulating effect is really, really super popular right now. Like really, really popular. And yeah, it's really cool. I mean, it's not unwarranted or unfounded. It just, I really hesitate you really need to know your codes, <laughs> your pigment codes, before you purchase something like that, or maybe just consider making your own. And again, I'll link to videos where people are creating their own and having really good success with that because they know they're using colors that are light fast. So, companies doing their own in-house light fastness testing and maybe not diluting the watercolors fully. And so they're getting a different effect, feel perfectly comfortable printing. Yeah, that's absolutely light fast. And a bunch of creators testing at home are going, no, not at all. This is horrible. So we really need to get into the comfort of mixing and creating and maybe making some pans. And I want to do some color theory this week, so if that's something that interests you, I would say come back by, swing back by my channel, and we can we can do a little color theory because that seems to be a lost art folks aren't aren't doing, and we need to get back into that. So. And you can see mine's kind of pinkish, kind of bluish, kind of purplish. If I added more, you can also make this more granulating by going thinner. If you do like huge wet on wet techniques, you can see it thin out more. I'm kind of doing a smaller detailed picture, but I did, I did a bird earlier and you can really see it lift and remove, and it looks really cool. I really like the look of it. It sort of looks like there's a wax resist almost within my, within my paints. So it's not quite staying. I don't know, it looks really cool. And, and I, get, I get the convenience of, yeah, I would rather buy it from another company, but with the way these things are going with the light fastness, I just, I have no trust. <laughs> I have no trust and folks are testing them at home and yeah, yep. So we need more light fast products. And in getting that, we're just gonna have to make our own. We'll have, I'm going to probably before the year is through because I'm doing a no buy 2022. I'm going to have to create a commissions only 100% light fast palette and then I will create a super granulating kind of duo tone mixture palette. I'm going to create both and then we can see together how that works, how that looks. And within the pans, those can all be reactivated and stuff. If they start to harden, just put in like a drop of glycerin or a drop of honey, which most of us have. I don't keep glycerin on hand. That's not really a product I have, but we do have honey in our shelves. So, I again, I have high humidity issues, so reactivating anything isn't a problem. Mine is the exact opposite, trying to keep things from molding. So what is the cost? 
what is the actual cost with buying a convenience watercolors? The cost is getting a product that you don't know that just because it says it's light fast doesn't mean it actually is. So I will link a bunch of the products I'm referring to if you're not familiar with. I will link a bunch of videos where creators have purchased these. And I know the CAM Supervision don't even have pigment information on them. There's no, no pigment information. So those can't even be checked and looked up. You would have to just do a straight light fast test. So I'm just going to guess that they're not, um, unfortunately. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.